Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vincent and we are live from the TM1 uh, user conference here in Sydney. <coughs> so today I have the pleasure <coughs> to welcome Alan Kirk. Welcome Alan. Glad to be here. So if you don't know who is Alan Kirk, so Alan is the equ equivalent of Captain America for the Avengers. So the TM1 community is very lucky to have the captain, uh, Captain okay. Kirk. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so Alan, you... When I started um, working with TM1, I was searching on Google and all the link, the help I found was on the TM1 forum and most of them were from you. And I'm sure a lot of people relate to this story. So I think everyone is curious to know a bit more about you. Like um, where, are you, where do you work, where do you live? Or? Okay, well, I work at Nine Entertainment currently. Uh, my start in TM1, however, dates back to the late 90s. I was even at the TM1 conference where it could be argued that aliases were born. Because uh, Applix, somebody asked the question, does everybody else have the same problem with exporting data and re-importing? That's all you could do in version 6. And Applix asked the question, does anybody else have this problem? Everybody raised their hand. And that was probably the birth of aliases. Then version mm. 7 came along with Turbo Integrator and it's just been largely onwards and upwards from there. And certainly the new Planning Analytics 2.0, on the server side at least, is, is very impressive. Yeah, so, <clears throat> and, um, so I, I just saw that you, you're close to 6,000 posts on the Chairman Forum, so where, where yes. do you find the time to answer all these questions? To a large extent I don't these days, a lot of those come from earlier years, but uh, there is, there's still a lot of good help to be found on the TM1 forum, whether it's from me or anybody else. There are a lot of people, there are literally thousands of users. I can't remember how many thousand users we have at the moment. Certainly there are uh, quite a few hundred active at any given time, so there is always help to be found there. Uh, unfortunately, I'd like to see the discussions about new developments in TM1 ramp up a little bit the way they used to in the old days, but we're still working on ways of uh, improving that as well. Yeah, but it's still a great source of knowledge. It's probably the, it is. the first source where people go to. Yes, I certainly hope so. So you're here today uh, because you did a presentation. I uh, did. About AI. So when I saw you were on the agenda, I was more expecting a topic about uh, TM1 or maybe rule processes. Or, uh, but you chose to talk about AI and TM1. So the first question would be, why did you choose this topic? That's a very good question because I knew that I was going to get hammered on the, or I thought I was going to get hammered on the relevance score for the ratings for my talk. But fortunately, TM1 people are very perceptive about these things and realize, as I do, that this is a very important topic. The last two times I've appeared at the, at the conference, I've done hands-on things. Uh, so things that they could go away and mm. use at their office. But uh, this time I felt that this was extremely important because the world is changing under our feet. And uh, if you want an example of that, there was a book written a while ago now by uh, Michael Lewis called Moneyball. And it was essentially about how baseball recruits its players. There had been for decades an old style school of thought and then one team came along with using regression analysis and other artificial intelligence, early artificial intelligence techniques and managed to get within one game of winning the World Series against the Yankees, notwithstanding that the Yankees had a payroll multiple times that of the Oakland A's. Mm. Now, that is essentially what is starting to happen now. The companies that embrace, I don't like the term artificial intelligence, I prefer augmented intelligence where computers search for patterns, work out what is really important, what is not really important. Other companies will be left behind. And I feel that essentially people who are working in this field, in, business intelligence, in the business intelligence field, need to start to embrace AI now that it's becoming more widely available. So there is a lot of mythology about AI. I wanted to dispel that. And I also wanted to signal how important it is that the uh, companies out there start to embrace AI, otherwise they're going to be left behind. And that is also true of people who are working in the TM1 field. And fortunately, the uh, new REST API that has been implemented in the server by the legendary Hubert Hikers has provided a way of getting data in and out of the TM1 server into artificial intelligence systems 
to provide better insights. Mm. Predictive analytics is the way we have to go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's very interesting topic and we hear AI all the time, anywhere, on, it's on your phone, it's everywhere. So I think during your talk, what you said that you were looking for a definition of AI, you mm. watch a few videos and you haven't found uh, the same definition all the time. So what, what would be for you the, what would be your definition of AI? Well, the, the, what I said about that was that there were seven people in a video that I watched who gave seven different definitions. And the reason for that is that they were from seven different industries. So what AI is for them, the automotive industry, self-driving cars, the airline industry, uh, planes which adapt to conditions, medical industry, classification systems to allow better diagnostics, for example. It's the same with any general area of computing. What it is, is what it does. So for me, AI is simply a way of making better decisions with better insight uh, because it analyzes so much data and can detect patterns that were previously undetectable. It stops decisions being made on pure instinct and more on insightful instinct. The need for instinct, the need for intuition will never go away. AI can never replace the executive decision, but it can make decisions better. And if we're going to stay competitive, in this world in particular, we need that edge. Okay, so it means that AI will not take my job either. AI will probably not take your job, will probably not take my job either, but only because I intend to get way out in front of it and run the thing myself. Yeah, you have to keep. Uh, keep updated about all the new stuff. So you do. I guess um, I think my last question for you will be: um, uh, What is it about about your motorsport manager, the video games that you? you how many videos did you make about this? Uh, oh, you really shouldn't have asked that <laughs> uh, because that's on my my YouTube channel, the TM1 channel, which is supposed to be about TM1, but. Thus far has been about, see motorsport was originally, the original intention of that series was just to gather data for doing TM1 videos. And then it became a soap opera. So there's actually, we started in the 2016 series, we're currently competing in the 2021 series. There's three videos per week. That's a heck of a lot of videos. So I don't know exactly how many I've made, but it's a lot. And uh, I had somebody actually just post on the TM1 channel the other day, they since deleted the message, I don't know why. Where are all the TM1 uh, videos? It's like, I do actually have an explanation of why there aren't any out there at the moment. It's because, well, let's not go into that. But there is a reason for it, and there will be TM1 videos out there as well. But Motorsport Manager will continue because the following is small but very loyal. Really? <coughs> I'm more uh, a Mario Kart person, but... Uh, Mario, Kart, Mario Kart, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, some of my drivers <laughs> are probably better suited to Mario Kart, yeah. especially Snidely Whiplash, but let's not go into that. Cool. So, yeah, so today it was the Sydney conference. It was. And in a few months we have the European conference. Oh, yes, I believe so. So I'm sure uh, all your European fans would love to meet you. So would you, would you come to the next uh, European conference? Wait, Alan, if you come, if you come, I promise you that we will give you the shield, the Captain America shield that you deserve. That's a very tempting offer. I won't say no now, but I will point out that I am going to Europe in about three weeks time and I hate going to Europe. Not being in Europe, I love being in Europe. Yeah, it's a long trip. But the travel to get there is a nightmare. So I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. So I take it as a yes. <laughs> you may certainly take it that way. You may very well think that I could not possibly comment. Okay, but we still have some time to work, work on it. So, um, yeah, I guess um, that was very interesting. I loved your presentation. Everyone loved it. And um, I guess I hope you like this short uh, version of it. And um, hopefully you will be uh, lucky enough to see Alan in Europe or next year in Sydney. And even if I'm not, you should definitely attend these conferences if you're a TM1 user because you get massive amounts of value out of it. And they're not paying me to say that, by the way. <laughs> We're just giving you a shield. You, you? Yes, just a shield. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.